What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac. Uh, and today we're gonna be checking out the Loop Deck Plus. Um, this is essentially a keyboard, but specifically for editing programs. So if you're using programs like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, After Effects, uh, Capture One, programs like that, uh, this is essentially what you're gonna wanna buy if you don't feel like editing using the mouse and keyboard. Uh, it's built specifically to have functions for controlling contrast, clarity, shadows, highlights, uh, saturation, messing with specific colors. So it's really mo mostly oriented for uh, Adobe Lightroom, uh, but you can use it for Photoshop uh, and Final Cut Pro as well. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be doing some brief editing. So I have my MacBook here um, in the Loop Deck Plus. So we're gonna go into Lightroom Classic, and this is just a picture of my brother. So we're just gonna reset, go back to the original. And uh, like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, mess around with the highlights, bring these down just a little bit. Maybe bring up the exposure just a little bit as well. Believe it or not, it is not uh, that easy to edit photos outside in the daylight, but we're gonna get it done. Um, we're gonna bring up contrast a little bit as well. Nothing crazy with this edit, just basically showing off the features. Um, so as we see here on the keyboard, we have a bunch of controls. Um, like I said, the contrast, clarity, highlight, all that stuff, that's mostly meant for uh, Adobe Lightroom. Um, but we have our tab controls. We also have custom modes, so you can set presets um, for specific modes or for specific programs like Final Cut Pro. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's how you use, the, uh, that's how you use this thing. Gonna edit another one here. Gonna bring down the highlights a little bit. Exposure overall is really, really bright. Uh, I think I'm gonna bring up saturation for a specific color. Bring up the saturation for the blues. Not because I think it looks particularly good, but just for demonstration's sake. Highlights, clarity. I usually like my photos to be, generally speaking, pretty sharp and vibrant. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as far as what it, you can do for editing in Adobe Lightroom, um, you can change screen modes here. So we have a few buttons for controlling before and after, so you can see the original and then now the final product. Um, you even have an export button, which I think is probably my favorite button, just knowing that you can hit one button and then you're ready to go and export your project, which I think is pretty cool. Overall, I'm kind of having a hard time figuring out what controls are used for which when it comes to editing in Final Cut Pro. Um, so like I said, control dial allows you to go back and forth between the beginning of the project and the end of the project. And then the clarity dials for scrubbing through your timeline and then messing around with a bunch of the other controls. It looks like it's messing with something in the window settings, uh, but it's not actually doing anything. So for Final Cut Pro, it's not really allowing you to be more fluent or efficient. Uh, it's kind of unnecessary in my opinion, but for some, this may be something that works pretty well. So before I even got this in, I was probably thinking that I was not gonna end up continuing to use this Final Cut Pro and after actually playing around with it for a little while, that remains to be true. Um, it's really not helping me be more efficient. The controls are kind of weird and wacky in terms of uh, what dials do what. Uh, the only thing that's pretty straightforward when it comes to editing in Final Cut is the export button. So would I continue to use this for Final Cut? No, but for Lightroom, 100% yes, just because that's really what this was specifically made for to a degree. Um, and I edit photos in Lightroom pretty decently often, pretty much like every other week or so. So this is something I'm definitely gonna continue to use because the overall goal for this is to basically improve your efficiency when editing. Uh, it's supposed to be like an instrument, right? When you start off playing piano, you gotta look down at the keys because you don't know what you're doing. But eventually after a little while, you get the feel of it and you can just sit smooth sailing basically. So if they were to make a next gen, there are a few things that I would want. The first thing is USB-C. Given that I'm using Thunderbolt 3 devices, that's pretty much where the entire industry is moving, generally speaking. I think it's just a no-brainer. Uh, and it's nice to see a detachable cable on this thing. I feel like if you were to snap this and then it breaks and then you lost 250 bucks, that would kind of suck. Uh, so detachable cable is something I would like to see in another version. Um, I'd also like to see an aluminum build, possibly. I mean, I wouldn't mind paying extra 
for better build quality for sure. But the plastic, I don't know. I feel like it's already gotten scratched a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. So seeing something with like an aluminum unibody would be pretty nice to see and it would match the overall like Apple aesthetic. I think iPad Pro support would be pretty cool. And I don't actually own an iPad Pro, but given that a lot of people are starting to replace their MacBooks and their MacBook Airs with iPad Pros and using them for professional uh, applications, I feel like iPad support is a no brainer. It's something they should definitely implement in the future. So that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know if you would buy the Loop Deck Plus. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle in terms of it being overkill and it being something that's an amazing tool for Lightroom editing and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm sure there are plenty of people who would love something like this. And if you'd love to check it out, I'll have a link down in the description below. Uh, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see future content from me and the other people on the 9to5Mac team uh, and that notification bell so you know exactly when a new video is going to drop. That's pretty much it though. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.